welcome to another Keel Hauled Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Logan, and we've got a lot of Sea of Thieves news to cover today, so tie yourselves to the mast and hold fast. Ahoy there, pirates. I hope you had a good week and a good weekend. I know I did. We had a lot of stuff going on in the Sea of Thieves world, and I couldn't be more excited to talk about the latest patch notes, my last week of The Hungering Deep, and of course, E3 trailer. Let's get started. First up on the docket, patch 1.1.1 went live last Tuesday with some bug fixes and a couple changes in the game. As the time goes on, more and more of you have become pirate legends, or are at least close to it, and Rare is continuing to improve your quality of life, so this latest patch does so by making sure that pirate legends will get higher rewards, excuse me, higher rewards when embarking on their Athena's fortune vo voyages, so I'm really glad to see that. That's something that I think a lot of pirate legends have really kind of decided that, you know, sometimes it's not worth it to continue to grind as, as those voyages are eight pages or eight voyages long and they, they tend to take a long time and you generally have to get the Merchant Alliance quests done sooner. So the fact that they're giving people higher rewards who are pirate legend, that's just, it kind of lets you know that they still care about them. So we also managed to get the ability to open and cr close crews in game. Uh, this is for those of you on Galleons looking to fill the last spot because someone who shall remain nameless bailed on you instead of bailing water below deck. So now you can change dynamically uh, your ship to recruit more pirates when someone falls asleep during a skull fort. So you can leave them to the skeletons. So to, to do this, you're going to want to log in. And when you go to the My Crew menu option, you'll see at the very bottom it should be just above Scuttle to toggle the open slash crew option at the bottom. So forgive me, I'm not in game, so I can't verify that, but I'm pretty sure it's right above the scuttle option. So it'll be nice to be able to fill out your crew slots if other people aren't able to come when you were expecting them to. So while you're out sailing, you'll also notice that washed up items have returned. And let me tell you, this is a welcome change. I, I've had to go back to get into the habit of checking out islands as I sail by them looking for random treasure now. And that's unfortunately led to some few attempts on Meg this, this last week where we had to sail past some really tempting items. It's, it always feels bad when you're passing an island and, and you have to pass up on a villainous skull because, well, you just you, you can't necessarily stop and take the time to grab it because someone is sitting there with a hairband around their controller holding on to the song so that you can get to T26 and summon the Meg. So we we did have a short patch this week, obviously with uh, the Hungering Deep. A lot of it was kind of on cruise control as they were kind of making sure that things were doing well, that people weren't having too many problems, and they just wanted to get in some bug fixes as well as the crew option and the Athena's Fortune Voyage is getting a little bump in the higher rewards, so nothing too major. Uh, I hope you were able to get your limited items from Merrick. I really do. I, I've had a few pirates re reach out to me this last week and let me know that they almost missed them. And I've also managed to get a few crews together throughout the week and actually tackle the Meg and make sure that they got their tattoos and scars, cosmetics, and of course the figurehead. So really, really glad to do that. I was, I had a really good time, and I'm really happy that some people who were were afraid to actually to to not be able to get it that we were actually able to get some crews together and we actually had a pretty good time doing that this last week so next up on today's docket let's go with calling this the keel hauled story uh i actually don't know if that's gonna work but you guys can tell me what what do you want to call the story time uh captain logan's tales of adventure i don't know Anyway, so this last week, I set it upon myself to make sure that I could get as many people the limited campaign items as possible. And with that, I got the opportunity to sail with some close pirate companions from pre previous uh, sails, or voyages, I don't know, and also Little Sea Dog. And let me tell you, this this guy is great. He, he is uh, a really good sailor, and he's a really big fan, and I really had a good time sailing with him working towards getting him the Merrick, the, the Hungering Deep content. And it was really fun because along the way, we had a pretty rough go at it. Now, we had been sailing for at least an hour, maybe two hours at this point, And we had come across, oh, 
I'd say maybe one or two different crews. Uh, one crew in particular, just a, a couple of guys that just the worst kind of pirates. The pirates that not only were they bad, but they were persistent. So they were persistently bad at hunting us down. And they kept trying to troll us most of the time. And we sailed around. Uh, we sunk them, I think, twice in, in the course of this this voyage, trying to find a, a familiar crew, or not a crew, a familiar crew, but just a, a crew that would be willing to help us. So we were sailing around, just kind of doing normal adventures. I think we were working on Merchant Alliance for a while, and uh, we, we started to check out this shipwreck down by uh, Ancient Spire Outpost. And it was kind of funny because we were actually out there just grabbing loot, and we noticed that there were a couple galleons around from us because we were doing the the different uh, voyages or the different journals to, to make sure the little sea dog got everything. So as we were kind of going from place to place to place, we noticed a couple galleons out there. And then out of nowhere, this one galleon is hanging out by old Crow's Nest out uh, Fort. And we weren't really sure what they were doing, but they were just kind of going out there, and a sloop out of nowhere started going after them. And we started watching this sloop really kind of chase these guys. I mean, they were kind of circling around each other for a while, and they were kind of taking fire. And we were like, okay, well, they're doing their thing, and we're doing ours, so let, we'll just leave them alone. We don't really have a stake in the matter, so or any kind of like, you know, we don't have a reason to go interfere. They can have fun. And as we were doing this, we noticed that there was a galleon in full black sails and ship hull uh, coming towards us. And we, we were kind of freaking out because we did have a bit of stuff on our on our ship since we had been kind of looting a lot of uh, shipwrecks along the way. And we wanted to talk with them. So we, we busted out our speaking trumpet and we called out to them and asked if they'd be able to help us with a meg. And sure enough, they actually were. And this was great because it was for, for once, we managed to find a crew after a few hours uh, who were actually willing to help us out with a meg. So we all decided that we were going to sail over to Sharkbait Cove and grab the song and then head back over to T26. As, as we were doing this, I kid you not, just as we pass Plunder Outpost, who comes but jealous Karen the Kraken. Yep, she comes and she decides that she is not happy that we're going to go hang out with Meg. So she attacks, uh, and, and meanwhile, I'm on the other ship. I, I asked for permission to board, got up on the on their ship, and then politely sat over by the plank, uh, making sure that I didn't make any kind of weird gestures or anything to make them feel uncomfortable. And I'm watching my ship, who, God bless them, took on the Meg uh, by themselves because they were sailing through and Karen, or no, they didn't take on Meg. I mean Karen. They took on Karen by themselves. And as they were sailing, the I was looking and I was like, oh, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, there's the water. That's uh, the water's black. And my ship, my beautiful ship is now engulfed in tentacles. Oh, that's that's just wrong on so many levels. So I asked them uh, politely to, to excuse me, and I shot myself over to my ship and continued to waste as many cannonballs as we possibly could to quickly get out of Karen's grasp. Because keep in mind, we're, we're down in the ancient isles. There is a sloop hunting galleon going after another galleon. We have no clue what the, what has happened to them, but we're worried that this sloop, after killing this galleon, will start coming for us. And realistically, we just want to take on Meg and get the titles and kind of help everyone out. Thankfully, the other crew did help out with Karen the Kraken, and we did kind of apologize for Karen that we were spending more time with Meg, but it wasn't anything personal. It was us, not her. It was all us. So Karen let us go, and we restocked a little bit on Sharkbait Cove. And the uh, as we, we got the song, we started sailing out towards T26. And it was kind of funny because as, we, <laughs> as these two full black galleons are heading east to go summon Meg the Megalodon to fight this giant shark, we, know, <laughs> we noticed that this galleon that is being chased by this sloop for the last hour is like heading towards us and they're not on they're not in game chat so we don't know what's going on but we see this this green decked out uh gold hoarder sloop chasing after them with their speaking trumpet and they're like pull over pull over we just want to inspect your bananas that's all just let us inspect your bananas and we just crack up because we're like is this sloop seriously chasing after this galleon just to get on board to look at their bananas 
Anyway, this, the, the galleon beaches itself on Sharkbait Cove, and we just keep going. We're, we're like, you know, we almost hit them. They didn't stop to mess with us. We're just going to keep going because we got a song to carry over there. Uh, so we carried the tune, pun intended, to T26 and proceeded to beat the living hell out of this this uh, megalodon. It was, it was pretty epic. And... After that, I gave them a, I believe I gave them a shipwreck captain's chest that we picked up on one of the shipwrecks as thanks for helping us, as even though they needed one person. We gave them one of the chests, and then we gave them a 40-gun salute from our ship to let them know we really appreciate them being cool with helping us out because it was kind of a, a quid pro quo. You know, they helped us, we helped them, we both got something out of return, and we ended up sailing back to <laughs> we ended up sailing sailing back to Shark Bay Cove and uh, having a good night. So I, I really enjoyed it. It's it's fun that we're getting these moments in the game, and I'm looking forward to being able to have more interactions like this, especially with multiple crews, because sometimes it can be kind of funny when you're sailing around with all these ships and there and other people have agendas but you know so you you make this this kind of light bargain to work with each other so that was a really great time little sea dog if you're listening to this thank you dude it was really good playing with you it was good playing with everyone that i played with this week but especially that moment just really stuck out in my mind i had a good time with it so uh that's it for the story i guess let's let's move into what you really wanted to actually like find out about which is of course the developer video update no, I'm just kidding. I'll, I'll go over that in a second. But you, you're here for the E3 trailer talk. I know. I know. At the end. At the end. Calm your, calm yourself. All right. So third up on today's docket, I have to talk about this because I want to make sure people know because everything that comes out about Sea of Thieves, they give us so much information. And if I don't talk about it, I feel like I'm doing a bit of a disservice to the company for me trying to cover their news as accurately as possible so let's get really quickly let's just dive into that official developer update it was on june 5th if you i've got the links in the show notes okay, let's just dive so joe talks to us one last time before e3 and a small vacation he talks about some of the favorite mo moments that he's seen that have come from the hungering deep especially with the speaking trumpet which myself included i have participated in playing music especially some beastie boys uh if you're a jj abram fan you know what song i'm talking about but the, the important thing that came from this video is that they have heard our feedback talking about how we want to have a reason to go back and replay the Megalodon experience, the Hungering Deep experience. I think a lot of us were hoping we would get something that, that we would be able to, to use some sort of item to specially craft or, or unlock certain rewards, you know, something that would give us a reason to want to play it multiple times that that way, if people didn't get it the first day or the first week, that there would still be groups out there trying to hunt the Megalodon to help each other to make sure that there was a reason to actually go down to Sharkbait Cove and go through this whole process again. So hopefully, hopefully with the cursed sales or at least Forsaken Shore, they can work in something, some of those things, something that will give us a reason to replay these different events, especially with the cursed sales I'm looking forward to because I, I don't want to talk about it. Well, I'll, I'll talk about that later. Anyway, we're, we're getting confirmation that the Skeleton Thrones event is starting to come uh, this Tuesday, the 12th. So get your speaking trumpets ready because it sounds like we'll need to work together with another crew, something they've continued to elaborate on as we continue to get more content. They want us working together. They want us talking to each other instead of just going out there and trying to kill each other. They want to keep this community strong and you know at least feasible to work with, with other crews. So as a result of the vacation, we're not going to see Joe for a while, so don't freak out about that. Drew Stevens will be returning for the next few updates in the, in the coming weeks, and I want you to do me a favor. Next time you watch that video, keep an eye on his left hand, because he has got the sickest Sea of Thieves, Thieves, Sea of Thieves, Sea of Thieves, tattoo sorry my vulgin came out there uh uh the sea of thieves tattoo on his left hand and i i love it it's really tempting i don't think i could pull it off though i think that's gonna do it for the video are you guys ready for the for the fourth item we're gonna move into the fourth item okay okay are you ready i'm, I'm ready 
It's the fourth item on today's docket, and I was waiting for this all day. I pushed back recording the episode to, to Sunday night just to be able to watch this, absorb it, watch it over again, and then absorb it some more, and then watch it over again. And uh, Anyway, E3. We are in the midst of E3. We got the Microsoft Xbox conference video, and yes, we got the trailer for Sea of Thieves. Oh my god, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. I couldn't, I can't be any more excited for this. So, we finally got, we finally got more information and confirmation for quite a few things with this video okay if you have not watched the trailer stop click the link in the show notes go watch it and then come back you're back soon that was pretty quick are you sure you watched it okay so this was an amazing trailer and again i love the use of in-game engine to continue telling the sea of thieves story it's great i love it so first things first, uh, we find out that Sea of Thieves has 4 million players. Awesome. Not bad, all things considered. I knew it was in the millions uh, and figured based on the last Tavern Talks podcast that it was probably around 3 million, but I'm happy to hear that it's even a little higher than that. So thanks to the game, 1.5 million friends were made. And I know from personal experience, I have gained a huge group of friends thanks to the game and managed to sail with a lot of you as a result. So something I hope to continue in the future. I hope that we get even more opportunities to sail with each other and I get to sail with different people as well to get to know all of you. So we get our first look um, at a pirate coming in from the rain. He's he's heading in to meet with the Order of Souls merchant on from what I can tell is either Ancient Spire Outpost or Plunder Outpost. I'm not 100% sure of that, but he's greeted and asked to show the merchant what he wants inspected. And a comical crab falls to the table and then scurries off along with a half-crunched banana and a broken timepiece. It's here that I notice a pack of cards on the merchant's belt. And I can't remember if this is possibly something that's left over from the original character designs that they did, or if this is something that was added for future content, since a lot of pirates have been asking for cards or dice or both to be added as something to play with in-game. So hopefully, hopefully this is a teaser. Hopefully it's not. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out, obviously, as we go along. So then he drops something in interesting. And I can't remember how this is pronounced, but I believe this is a palantir for you Lord of the Rings fans. Or a glass ball full of fire and foreshadowing for everyone else, I guess. I don't know. Uh, we learn as the merchant explains that the, the waves of change are roll throughout the sea and a new land is revealed it, it sounded really good when she did it I, that's all i know this land is made of fire and darkness uh which might as well be a balrock as far as i'm concerned but if if you haven't guessed by now we're getting volcanoes we're getting volcanoes i can't wait it's gonna be awesome we're gonna get to deal with lava for the first time and see lava uh you know what it, it, it It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <clears throat> so, uh, but that that's it for the Forsaken Shores. Um, as far as we know, we, we really don't know a whole, whole lot about what's going to happen with that. But, there's a big but. Uh, we did confirm rowboats are coming. And there has been already a lot of conversation happening about how this is going to be implemented. Especially the new land. Uh, how rowboats will function. How they're going to sail as far as like how you actually sail with them. Like are you going to pull the triggers. And courtesy to uh, to, to CJ Super Pack uh, from the Player One podcast. For, for him and Bodhi Slam kind of talking about this in our Discord. Uh, they, they think like maybe it'll be kind of forward and backwards with the joystick. The way you, you would turn the, the wheel on the ship. Uh, and that the Or how you would move yourself. They were thinking like maybe pulling the trigger to the triggers to to do each individual or or kind of like a tank so really interesting conversations being had right now about how rowboats are going to be implemented but we know that they are coming so personally i think uh the forsaken shores will have to be a place that you travel to through some otherworldly means and the rowboat will take you to and from this uh place in in the sense that right now 
I'm, I'm thinking that we're going to have to go through a portal, and I'm thinking that the giant spire in the middle of the ocean is our best bet for that, because as far as I can tell, that is big enough to sail through with any ship, uh, which which means any of the three ships. Um, so with that, you can park your ship, because it, right now, like, if you were to say, like, if you were to travel to a new land that is only accessible by rowboats, you would have to park your ship somewhere. Where the heck are you going to park your ship that you're going to feel safe with it being left alone and using rowboats? Or do you have to send a couple people? How is that going to work for solo player on a sloop? Like, do they get a rowboat? So there's so many questions right now that are being asked about this. But I'm thinking that right now the map is split into three perfect triangles that separate all three seas. And I don't think that the Forsaken Shores is going to be an entire new sea. If they did, they would have to radically change the entire world of Sea of Thieves. And I don't know if they're going that far just yet. We'll have to see. But besides that, I said three ships, didn't I? Yeah, that's right. I, I did. God, I can't believe I forgot to mention this. So three ships. We're getting that ship. During Curse Sales, they did confirm we are getting a schooner. And I called it, and you know I called it, a long time ago. In fact, I'm pretty sure, when was that? Oh yeah, that was back when we had the, the Merrick, the Hungering Deep trailer. When we saw the cave paintings, we had two mast ships with three people on them. And I'm pretty sure they're going to have two canyons, cannons just based on the silhouette in the this video. So it's not a man of war. Sorry. I know what you were thinking. You wanted the six-man ship. They're not going to do it, guys. Sorry. Maybe not right now. Maybe later on. Maybe later on. Calm. Calm. So we're getting a schooner during curse sales, which is in July. Forsaken Shores is in September. So it looks like they're doing two months between content updates, which should be interesting considering they said that there are three more updates after, uh, after Forsaken Shores, which means that the next one would have to be in October, and then the one after that would be November, and then the one after that would be December. So not sure if those guys are going to nail those dates as they in originally anticipated. So not sure what happened there, but I'll have to wait and find out. So the schooner is going to be two masts to kind of go back with that, and it's going to have, probably going to have two cannons and probably be three people. So I'm hoping that you can flex between two and four. Either way, I, I think a, a three-man crew is fitting. It'll probably be faster than a schooner or faster than a sloop um, against the wind, and but not as fast as a galleon with the wind. Uh, but the two sails should be pretty good. So uh, a lot of this is is kind of just, I'm I'm looking forward to. It. I'm I'm excited for this because there's been plenty of times where people have had two people and they want to party up and I I wanted to jump in on on their crew and and help them out as well too. So it looks like we're also getting skeleton crewed ships that will rise from the seas in the curse sails. I'm personally really excited to see this. There was a video shown a long time ago that depicted what was at the time thought to be the Fairy of the Damned. And this was pretty cool because the ship shimmered into existence in a kind of green glow, which is still kind of something you can still see uh, from the effects. Um, when you go onto the ferryman ship, you can kind of see yourself kind of shimmer, or you can see other pirates kind of shimmer, and that's kind of how this, sh this ship would kind of appear at night in this video. It was really cool. That idea was obviously eventually changed from what we have today, but the idea of a ship emerging from waters with tattered black sails that's crewed by the damned and captained by a man so evil that hell itself spat him back out could be a real ship. I can't wait. For, from what I can tell, we, we didn't get to see Captain Flameheart, and I'm still holding out for him, but needless to say, the, my spirits were pretty dampened when, when we didn't get to see him. So we know captains are going to be on the ship. We don't know if they're going to be the same old captains we have been fighting or if they're just going to be, or if they're actually going to be something new. So, but either way, the ships for Curse Sails look amazing. In the video, they are full-sized galleoned crews for more than just like four skeletons. And there are these large wooden structures built up on top on top of the, the uh, bow decks. And I don't know if these are platforms that you have to do battle on or if these are going to be something that you use to kind of shoot yourself onto on these cursed vessels. Uh, they, they're, they're so interesting. Everything's broken and, and kind of just it looks like it's been raised up out of the sea it's it's amazing but unfortunately the video is so it's so like 
they they didn't they obviously didn't do anything too clear because they don't want to like solidify things but I can't wait till we get some better details on what the what what's going on but uh one thing that I did want to touch on is this video really did highlight just how vivid the characters in the games could be. Uh, I'm still holding out that we're going to get like lip synced dialogue from vendors and voices for our skeleton captains. So uh, regardless, I know that we have two weekly events planned leading up into July. Uh, my biggest fear is that we won't get cursed sales until the end of July, similar to Hungering Deep. And we'll have a couple weeks with smaller patches that won't be content like weekly updates. So I'm, I'm really concerned about that. Uh, Skeleton Thrones is coming on July 12th or June 12th and Cursed Cannonballs is still up in the air about when that's coming. Um, I, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess that's it. Is that it? I think that's everything. If I miss something, if there's something in the video that you saw that you want to point out to me, feel free to let me know. Um, you can reach me at c-a-p-t-l-o-g-u-n at gmail.com that's my email address uh let's see oh 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 oh! before i even do this oh my gosh i can't believe i ever forgot i gotta talk about who who got in contact with me all right hold on Whew. okay i I'm, I'm back i promise i almost forgot i have to let you know about the people that got in touch with me and thank you to everyone that did because i really appreciate it i love hearing from you so First things first, Gabe wrote in. He said, hey, Captain, just wanted to thank you so much for the great job you do with the podcast. I love listening each week on Google Play Music. I hope we can sail some time and share in this fantastic game. Keep up the great work. Gabe, thank you very much. I'm going to add you later, and I'm going to make sure that we do get a chance to actually sail. And thank you for sending the email, even though I know it's not. It's There's no review process for Google Play. Also, I had Jonathan Cognocker reach out to me. He said, ahoy there, Captain. And Logan, a listener and fellow pirate from Old Blighty. As I don't have access to iTunes, I use an Android app to grab all your episodes. So I can't leave a review for you. So I'm sending this message to let you know how helpful your podcast has been since the launch of Sea of Thieves. It has really helped me find my way around the game and hear all the latest news and patch notes while I'm working something or no, I'm sorry, while I'm working. This is something I look forward to hearing every week. Thanks a lot, and may the winds ever be in your sails. Jonathan, thank you. Awesome. I love to hear it. I really appreciate that. I hopefully will get to sail again, because I know we have in the past. Um, let's see. The last one is from Billy445. He wrote on iTunes, a five-star review, Great Sea of Thieves News and Discord. This is a great podcast that will lead you right into a community, Will, with chill bunch of pirates. Be it a weekend pirate or a salty dog, this is the place to be and the podcast to listen to. And I welcome everyone else. If you listen to this and you have friends on the Sea of Thieves, feel free to share this to, with them. Because the more people that listen, the more people will find it because of discoverability through uh, Apple uh, podcasts and stuff. If you have time, I would definitely appreciate the review, be it an honest review uh, or a salty dog review. I guess that works too. But anyway, if you want to get a hold of me personally the way they did, feel free to do so. You can always email me at C-A-P-T-L-O-G-U-N at gmail.com. You can reach me on Twitter at C-A-P-T underscore L-O-G-U-N. You can also reach me in game. My gamer tag is C-A-P-T-A-I-N-L-O-G-U-N. No spaces there. I also sail on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays over on Twitch, C-A-P-T underscore L-O-G-U-N. Feel free to hit me up over there. I try to grab people in the evening on Pacific Time to try and sail with to make sure that everyone gets an opportunity, especially with weekly updates coming. I want to make sure people get that limited time content before it goes away. It would break my heart to hear that someone listens and they didn't get a chance to do it. I really hope everyone got Merrick stuff so that's gonna do it for this episode i hope you enjoyed it i'm sorry if it's a little bit longer than you were anticipating but oh, we got a lot that we had to talk about so thank you pirates i love you i can't wait to sail with you on the sea of thieves